guys, what's up? So today is going to be a bit of a small tour of the uh, Line 6 Pocket Pod software, uh, the Line 6 Monkey, and the VizyX Pocket Pod software, I guess they call it, B-Y-Z-E-X, I don't know how they pronounce it, but okay. So, first of all, you're going to have to plug in your Pocket Pod to a power supply or batteries, plug your guitar into the guitar input, and your amp out to your amplifier or you can go with headphones or what I've chosen to do because I don't have a second loop cord long enough is I plugged into the headphone jack with my computer's uh, 2.1 audio speakers so I've got a bass box on the floor and two satellites up top so the first thing we're going to do is talk about the Line 6 Monkey program you're going to need to download and you'll need to create a free online account too with Line 6 when you fire it up it's going to search for your devices and um, in here, um, it's for updates uh, and or add-ons. Um, and right now, everything is up to date on mine. I've got the newest version of the software. Uh, so I'm running uh, the newest firmware, 101. I'm running Line 6 Monkey, newest version, 1.67. Uh, there's no other um, updates at this time that are available, so we just quit. See ya! Okay, so let's uh, fire up the software. Now, providing you even had the right MIDI ports to begin with, you'd find out really quick with the, mo with the Monkey program. If it comes up and barks, you might want to switch to a different USB port um, because I've got three ports on my computer and only one of them will work as a MIDI in and out por port through the USB. And uh, if everything goes well, you'll be at this screen now for your Pocket Pod. The software will be launched. So, our default that's on right now is called Modern Height Gain Number Two. So the only way to get sound out um, while you're messing with this program is through the headphone jack or your guitar uh, output to your amp jack. So what was chosen for effects in this thing uh, for the name, the amplifier being used, the FX being delay or flan delay slash flanger one, and a four by twelve British style gain uh, box, um, you get reverb, noise gate, delay, flanger control. All the controls you see, you get access to, including a wah pedal. So if you listen to this tone here. Let's turn the wah on. And you can just click your left mouse button and hold it down. And just strum your guitar or whatever. Find a wah position you like. And the bot frequency, top frequency. Now, if you want to change the cabinet, uh, just click here and you get a bigger drop down menu that you can just go click and go on. So go to a 1x12. Right? But if you want to, you can also click through here and it'll give you a list too. by 12 modern class A. Tweed blues 4 by 10. Or just go here, click it here. Small tweed one by eight. And you can mess with every control that you see, it's dialable.
So let's say you like what you just did. Click the save button, give it a name, and it'll go into the Line 6 Pocket Pod folder on your computer. And you give it any name you want, okay? Now, if you also want to save it to the pod, to you, once you take the pod off your computer and go back to your amp, and you want to access it on the pod, then you're going to have to click Store In and pick a bank that's available from the list, and that's where you store it. And it'll have that name attached to it. Okay? Pretty simple, straightforward stuff. Um, there is some stuff that's a little bit more complex. I'm still trying to figure a lot of stuff out. You can click on the bank mode here, and in here you can go just line six drive. <laughs> up uh, rotary phone XP32 Fuzzy Wuzzy And so let's go back to the tone mode Keeps you on Fuzzy Wuzzy and we want to get rid of the tremolo because we don't really like it. So let's go to uh, like a chorus one. And let's switch our cabinet over to uh, British High Gain 4x12. Now here we have access to the toggles. Distortion. It really doesn't make a lot of difference in EQ. And the drive. change and you can hit six give it a new name boom you want to store it in your uh, list boom click store to destination away you go um, pretty simple easy stuff um, everything that's dialable around there crazy stuff um, because you have your amps you have your FX and your cabs your amps are here this is what you get okay this is your FX or effects and of course this is other cabs right so um, from there you mess around with all your controls to create all your crazy mental sounds and have fun you also have this air control too I'm not quite entirely sure what that really does, but it does make an effectual sound, so it's there. Um, noise gate you can mess with, reverb you can mess with, um, you know, let's give it lots of reverb, let's go to a spring reverb. Um, let's bring back the treble a little bit, uh, more bass, less mid, 
bring the drive a little higher. <laughs> save it boom boom now if you uh, are messing around on the, the computer with your line 6 and you want to go back into one of the sounds that you saved and maybe tweak it a little bit differently right then click open find your file name that you want boom open it up and then store it back into the pod after you're done messing with it okay um, and then of course these are all your channels User channels. You know, different effects are going to have different um, things accessible to you, etc. So, you can have a ton of fun. Now, you do have a manual in here called the Pilot's Guide, Preferences PDF, Troubleshooting PDF, uh, About the Pocket Pod, Online Line 6 Support, Custom Tone Website. Now this website here is unaccessible for some reason and this one says that there may be people trying to hack me. So I might have to look for a separate uh, MidiQuest or MidiQuest XL program separately and find those without going through here. I don't know why it does that, but it does. Custom Tone website, however, does work. And in here, you're going to go and you're going to find your pod unit, whatever it happens to be. This is our pocket pod, so we're going to click on that. Now here you can share, upload, whatever, um, thousands of sound files. Some people have done Eddie Van Halen stuff, Power Man 5000, Metallica, Red Hot Chili Peppers, and some of them do it by the song, etc. Uh, right now there's over 1,344 pages of nothing but file after file after file of different tones that you can download. It tells you, you know, this is Metal Shred using a humbucker. Uh, alternative using a single coil, etc., etc., etc. The list goes on and on and on and on and on. You can take a look at the user rated downloads, like you know, three out of five. Some people, oh, five out of five. This is an awesome one called Ripper's JCM 800. Suggested EQ settings, blah blah blah. If you want a bit more bite, metal shred on a humbucker, okay. And so that's the the rating they've given. People have given it, I guess. Uh, rock dry, edge delay, just all kinds. I mean, this thing is so loaded. Now, there are good points and bad points, of course, to these guitar processor units. Good point is, it is a cool little portable unit. You can slap some headphones in it, play in private. Uh, you can run it out to an external amplifier, like your main guitar amp, um, because all the jacks are here to do whatever you need to do. Um, the biggest drawback I find with it is that you don't have like a stomper switch where you can rotate through stuff, go boom, 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 right? You have to stop what you're doing and then switch to another tone. So whatever tone you're going to want to play with, okay, the good point is, is if it's a song and you need, uh, say, ZZ Top, um, whatever the song may be, okay, um, and you want that tone bank, right? Well, that's fine. So you can play that song with that tone and play the same effect as what they used, right? And uh, so that's the whole idea behind that. But you can also take that effect and manipulate it the way you want and resave it without affecting the original effect setup. Because you cannot mess with overwriting a preset in this. You can manipulate it any way you want on the program, right? And then resave it as a whole new file under a new name, right? And uh, have it customized with a little bit of extra your way stuff. You do have a built-in tuner to the Line 6 pod, which is kind of nice and handy, uh, especially if you're out portable with it. Um, you know, there's little mini amplifiers that can actually plug in to the line six so you can like get this little tiny mini amp that's about you know yay big slap it in there and boom boom instead of headphones and 
you know, so instead of having uh, one of those mini amps on your hip plus this on your hip, you can have one that's portable and Joyo makes one. You just need a reducer adapter, uh, but it works. You can do it. Um, all kinds of crazy stuff. It, it's fun. Um, you might even be able to actually, uh, actually, yeah, with the Joyo thing, you can go to your uh, guitar amp output with that uh, Joyo unit. So you don't even need to go through the headphone jack. Um, so anyways, this is the basics of what I know about this program so far, and it's not that hard. Um, when I first plugged everything in, I was like, oh, I can't find a MIDI port. It's like, I already knew I didn't have actual MIDI ports on my computer. What it's talking about is USB port that can be used as MIDI in, in and out. So one out of three of my ports works as a MIDI in and out port, obviously, because the program is working. I can manipulate what I manipulate here, goes through uh, the USB cable into the pod, out to the pod, out to my speakers in this case, right? Uh, or to my amplifier, whichever way I have it hooked in. This is the easy way to program and save stuff. You don't have to have this software, you can do it all manually from the pod, but it is a pain in the neck, okay? This makes it so simple and easy, you know? So why would you not want to use the software, you know what I mean? So first you got to make sure which port you have on your USB bus that's going to be suitable for MIDI in and out. Um, and then hook her in and away you go. And then you download the program, do your updates, make sure your updates are all done uh, through the uh, Monkey program, through Monkey Line 6 Monkey. Make sure your firmware is up to date, any other software that it needs to update is up to date, and it'll update your pod. Every time you uh, fire up the program, it actually rescans your pod for everything that's in there and gives you full access to it in here as well. So you just fire it up, and it's going to scan everything. Now you have complete access to your pod of everything that's in there. And then you just got to navigate your way around. Uh, going through the bank mode, you can go through here too, uh, you know, and just pick out something that you want to mess with. Faster way of finding stuff, right? <laughs> Snow Dome, so it is using a black panel amp, it's using rotary speaker, and it is using a British high gain 4x12 cab. Voila! So, you can change it to any different cab you want, you can change the effects in it, you can change the amp alone, whatever you want. Oh, excuse me. So, and you can change how the rotary speaker works. Fast, slow, fast speed, slow speed, the depth. Shut it right down if you want. Add in a drive and an EQ onto there. And then start messing around with everything you want to mess with and just have at it. So it's a really versatile unit. It's actually more versatile than I originally thought it would be. So I was looking at the FX area, like this is your effects, like chorus, delay, tremolo. Delay and chorus together, delay and flanger together, delay and swell. It's like, hey, what about distortion? What about overdrive? What about this? What about that? Well, no, that's you're going to get access to all that stuff through other means. Um, so this is just your main FX area. You know, everything else is done in here. You mess with it. So anyways, that's pretty much the end of our little mini tour. Um, I don't know much more than this at this point, um, so keep your questions pretty much simple if you can. I'll do the best I can I can to answer them anyhow. I'm still learning a lot about this, and there's a lot to learn. Like even going through the manual here, this is your pilot's guide. This is the manual on the program, and this thing is, uh, you know, it, it's it's detailed. It, it's got a lot of info in here. Um, Remind me later. Um, hardware, visualizing, editor, and librarian, blah, blah, blah. 
Okay, it talks about stuff. It tells you about the setup, it tells you about uh, bank mode button, uh, backing up your tone data, you know, save set. Um, what if I get an error message? Okay, I backed up my server. So how do I edit my channel? Tone edit. Tells you all, everything you need to know is in here, like pretty well. There's a few things that are kind of uh, like not there, but yeah, it's common sense. You need an audio output of some sort. I thought it was originally gonna just output it to my computer when I plugged in the USB port. Boy, was I wrong. So, you know, live and learn. This is my first time ever using an effects processor unit. I'm used to guitar pedals or even no pedals, right? Um, I've never had an effects processor, but now I'm learning this thing, and really, it's not that hard to learn. You know, it's not as complex as it may look or you may think it is. It really isn't that bad, you know? Um, you just gotta learn and go into it with a, I can understand this attitude, you know what I mean? And away you go and you keep going and going. So that's the end of that one. But then you've also got reference uh, preferences PDF, troubleshooting PDF, um, about this thing. You know, this product is licensed to license six pocket pod users. Okay, so long as you got a pocket pod, where you go. Um, for use with the Line 6 Pocket Pod, the ultimate tone for mobile guitarists. Um, it's a great little jam thing in the back seat of the car if you're on a trip too, eh? You know, you can plug your headphones in and jam in, you know, relative quietness and not bug anybody, you know? And because uh, the unit can run on four AAA batteries and it'll run for hours, you know? And it has the belt clip too for the portability. So it's, it's a nice unit, you know, and once you get used to it, it's fine. Um, it's too bad they didn't have like a foot switch for it though, so you could, you know, click through stuff pretty rapidly, you know, like an up and down type switch or whatever, or like even four switches, you know, pick your user channel, pick your band, pick your song, pick your whatever, and go boom, 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 boom. That would have been nice, but they didn't do it that way, and that's fine. But hey, what do you want for 169 bucks? You know what I mean? Um, so, I don't know, we all want the world. But, um, yeah, so all in all, uh, that's, that's pretty much uh, where our tour ends for now anyway. As I learn more, of course, I will put up videos of, you know, any little tricks I've learned and, you know, that sort of jazz and uh, let you know uh, if I've downloaded any of the tones from the online uh, freebie site there and see how I, I like them. But, uh, yeah, so anyways, uh, that's pretty much about it. So uh, thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next vid.